Okay, the first step would be to go to the Passport Advantage site and either using your customer or business partner login, you acquire the media. The media here I already have, the Unix Linux 7.0.33ai.zip file. Use your extracting tool and extract that to the local file system. We now have the file here. Double click to see its contents. If you look at the README, it'll give you the version information here and some relative information about the adapter installer, which is another component that you'll need to install this. I have both packages already, so we'll continue with the install. I come back to the adapter installer and I'll take the installer and I'll open up the install data folder. Since I'm on a Windows platform, I'll select Windows. I'll select no VM and I'll run the adapter installer. At this point, the install anywhere will prepare the installation. You're prompted with the first installer window. Select your language. Click next to continue. Select I accept the terms. Go forward. Choose the file. In this step, you're going to use the file that you unzipped. In this case, it would be the adapter Unix Linux 7.0.33.zip.enc. Select this to be the file. Choose Next. Now we need to select where we're going to extract this package to. We'll go ahead and choose this in the same folder that we extracted it to. And here I'll select it. Now I have my source file and destination folder. Select Next. The installer will give you the prompt summary. Select Install. Note this is merely preparing the files for you to start to use for the iSIM app. Select Done. We'll go back to the root folder where the packages have been installed. We'll go down to our Unix Linux and now we see the files. Now what we're going to do is we are going to take this Linux profile.jar file to our ISM server. We're going to import this profile. Then the next step would be to actually run it. We go to our identity manager solution and log in. An administrative account is needed. You go to configure system, manage service types, and we are going to import. Note that the profile is presently here along with some other defaults. These will not be the current versions. These are the ones that are bundled with the packet at install time. Select import. We're going to browse local file system to where we downloaded this at. 7.0.33.ai is my folder. I'm going to select the POSIX Linux profile. Select import and select OK. Now the installer for the POSIX Linux profile.jar will be imported into the item server's LDAP directory and we'll be able to use that. At this point click close, close the tab. Let's go to manage services. We are now going to create a service that will allow us to manage this target. We will select create. We will select the type. In this case we're going to select the POSIX Linux profile. We'll select next. We're going to give it a name. POSIX Linux. This will be my Red Hat Enterprise Server 6 that I'm going to manage. The Tivoli Directory Integrator location is defaulting to this local server on here. And I'm going to give it a managed resource location of where the actual Red Hat server is. One thing that I'd like to make note of here is this location. In this instance, I happen to be using the virtual appliance for the identity manager. I'm going to log into the admin console for the virtual appliance, and we need to note the IP address. This is the address of where this TDI instance is running. And what we'll do in the service control for the dashboard appliance will show you that our TDI dispatcher is actually running. You do not need to use the one that's bundled with the security identity manager VA. 
you can use any TDI version as long as it is a supported version. Here we can see the directory integrator server and its status is started. It's running on IP address 972.121.177. We'll go back to our ISIM configuration and we will select our resource address as this. Okay. Um, we'll go ahead and say next to the configuration. We'll use the shadow file. We'll take all the defaults. We'll select administrator. In this case, I'm going to use root for my example today. You do have other options. I will click next and I will now test the connection. At this point, we're connecting to TDI and we're communicating on port 1099 and we have a successful communication. We'll click Next. At this point, the service status and information is displayed. It tells us which version of our Red Hat server we are, because we queried that under our test. It tells us what version our adapter is and the profile version. It lets us know our connector version and our TDI version as well. At this point, we'll say Next. Um, we'll go all the way to the end without any additional information and we will create a policy for manually requesting accounts. We'll select next, set a reconciliation schedule to be monthly, and say finish. At this point we've created a service, we've created a profile, and now we can work with this target and manage it. At this point we've successfully installed the profile onto the server, created a service, and now we're going to look at the service to find, and we'll do a reconciliation of the target service and see all the accounts that it's returned. Um, one thing that we'll want to ensure that the reconciliation for the managed service is successfully completed on the TIM server side. At this point we'll look for the service. At this point it is a Linux profile. We'll search. We only have one of that. This was the one we just created. We'll reconcile and we'll look for errors here. At this point we're not going to have any query. We're going to submit a full reconciliation and we're going to view the status of the request. This is your TIM server reaching out to your resource target and immediately we notice a fail. The reconciliation will give you an information based on some configuration strings that it has here. We'll look at the service detail and note here that it gave us a ton of information in regards to what's here. So now we're going to go back and look at this dispatcher to see what the problem is with that. From here, it's telling us a bad service configuration. The selected failed login command is not installed on the system. Knowing this system, I'll go back to my service, and I'm going to look at my target service. When I look at the dispatcher attributes, excuse me, authentication attributes, authentication method is passed, not a problem. Um, when I look at my additional configuration, the command to use for failed logons, note the message told us that it had a problem here with the failed login command. So if I go to the service here and look at the failed login command, it needs to be PAM tally 2. I say oct to my authentication, enter my password, and say OK. Close. Let's execute this reconciliation again and make sure that it actually succeeds. Refresh on our service data. Reconcile now. And submit. View the status of this reconciliation. And now we have the recon successfully completed here on the target. We go back to the service. We're going to look at the accounts on this target. As we successfully reconned, we returned the accounts. Look at a refresh, and these are the list of the accounts that are now on this target system for the Red Hat machine that I've successfully reconned. Thank you.